Welcome to our workshop. Pedestal tables typically come apart down here at the bottom. There's a lot of pressure on these legs and they're splayed out and what ends up happening over time is they become loose. How do you fix that? I'll show you how. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. Pedestal tables come in all sizes. This is a small one, but you can also see pedestal bases on large dining room tables as well. What makes them unique is they have a center column that's suspended off the ground, and they have three or more legs on them. These legs are splayed, and they typically fail at the bottom here where the most leverage is put on these. Over the years, glue will break down, and if these are dowel joints like these ones, they do end up loosening up. I start by turning this over and seeing which legs I can pull off. There's one. Oh, that was easy. Here I've got a broken dowel. I'll see if I can pull that out with pliers. Sometimes you have to drill these out. Yeah, that's loose. Okay, so that came out. If you want to learn how to drill out dowels, we've got a video on that. It's important to take the glue off of all the surface because that needs to be bare wood for the next glue to stick. I'll scrape all these off and the dowels as well, clean out the holes, and it'll be ready to put back together. This leg has been repaired once. It's got some epoxy in here. I just need to clean that out and get a nice clean surface as well. I clean up the joints on the base too. I typically use a card scraper on these because they've got a larger surface. And again, what I'm looking to do is just get rid of the old glue and residue. So I've got nice bare wood here for the glue to make contact. What I do is I dry fit these, meaning I put them together with no glue. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure, first of all, that I've got a good solid joint here. But second, I have to figure out how to clamp this. If I try and take a clamp across here, there's nothing for that clamp to grab onto. So I've got a challenge to fix here before I can even think about putting glue on that. To clamp this properly, I need clamping pressure that's 90 degrees to this joint. So if I put up a square here, you can see what that looks like. I need a clamping pad right here to be able to put pressure this way. This is called vector clamping. I need to build something out here that will hold that clamp and be able to provide even pressure so I can get a nice tight joint here. The first step in vector clamping is taking a piece of softwood and cutting out the profile of the piece you're looking to clamp. clamping pad that matches the leg. I need to take the middle point here and draw a 90 degree line on that midpoint. So that's here. So this is where my clamp clamping pressure is going. And then I need something that is 90 degrees to that for the clamping pad. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Put here. So I need to take this out. Okay, so to glue on this piece here, I put the leg in. And this is, again, just a dry fit to make sure everything works. Here's my clamping pad. And I put a notch in it for this one clamp. And really the only job of this is just to hold that clamping pad on. 
I've created another pad over here because this is an offset angle. I needed some pressure out here. So if I pull this up here, clamp this on. There, I've got a nice tight joint. So it's all ready for glue. With this glue up, I've got two mortises here that are loose. So I'm gonna be using epoxy inside these. If this was an antique, I wouldn't be doing this, but this isn't. So epoxy is a gap filler, um, and it's also strong once it's filled. There's no other glue that'll work that way. And it's nice and tight in here. So epoxy in these two mortises and wood glue everywhere else and we should be good to go. So I talk about this in my videos. The way to put on wood glue is covering all the bases, every edge, every seam. And I use an artist brush to get the glue in all the spaces that I need. I've seen so many pieces I've taken apart where there just wasn't enough glue to hold the piece together. So there, there's wood glue on each side, and that's good to go. And then I'll just mix up the epoxy, quickly put that together, and then I can clamp. If you're looking at work, fixing something that's an antique, uh, what you want to use is protein glue, high glue because those joints can be taken apart and put back together again with uh, heat. So you don't want to be using modern glues on antiques. I'm gonna let this leg dry and then work my way around the table, putting each leg on. Because of the clamping here, I don't wanna do all four at the same time. That would be far too complex. So I'll get this put back together and show you what it looks like. I hope you found this furniture repair useful. I read all the comments on our videos. So leave me a message or ask a question. If you wanna subscribe using the link over here and click on the bell icon, you'll get notified as soon as our videos get released. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.